Yay, media group. Mark's always dancing and singing. Mark is always dancing. He's the lovable oil trader. That's what I put on there. And then I, because I edited the video for him. And then I put the unemployed TV host (laughs) when Jeff came out, because I thought that was just so funny. The man band wannabe. Hey guys, episode 81. We had a fun weekend. It was very chill. Yes. But Jeff had a lot of fun. He was busy putting together a band, a cul-de-sac band. (laughs) Wow. Right into it, huh? (laughs) We'll get more into that. But I wanted to say, okay, so fall, we had fall break, getting back in the routine of everything. And I swear this always happens to me. So when I was a kid, I never needed water at night. Like I never got up to drink water, never needed a drink. Okay. The boys have to have water all the time. And I always have the water bottle set up and ready for them. I feel, fill, not feel. I fill those water bottles up every night. And the, when I fill them up, they never drink them. And then when I, then the other night I was like, you know what? They're, they never asked for it. I'm not going to uh, make them. They both woke up in the middle of the night. Mom, where's my water? Yeah. You got to have it. It happens it's almost to like me a every single night. Security thing. Cause I, I always have a glass of water. Next yeah, to but my when bed. you were a kid, did you ever have a cup beside your bed? I don't, I can't remember. I never drank water. I never drank anything. I just, I felt like I was probably the most dehydrated kid. And I, all I did was just play. I don't remember always I'm sure having to have drank. a drink. I'm sure you drank. No, I, I never, ha- I remember in high school, I never packed a lunch. I never ate lunch. I would always just sit in the cafeteria. Maybe sometimes I might get a sandwich, but other than that, I never ate. I just... I don't know what I did. I would drink out of the water fountain if I was thirsty. But I mean, now I have to have a cup with me. I know we've kind of talked about this, but I'm just saying like at night, I'm, I have to wake up and I need to stop it because then I have to pee. It wakes me up in my sleep because then I have to get up a bunch of times to pee. I pee like four times in the night because I drink so much water. I do too, though. It's kind of just normal for me because I drink so much water. Like I have a giant cup that I always fill up before I go to bed and I just leave it there and half the time I spill it at night. (laughs) Oh, you spilled it yesterday while making the bed. I did spill it. Yeah, but it's just, it's so weird to me. It's everything like that happens. If I have everything organized and packed and nobody asks for anything and then the one time I don't do it, then everybody needs something. Life's hard. You know, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's funny how that happens. Speaking of lunches, when I was growing up, I don't know why I thought about this, but you know, like everyone would brown bag their lunch, Yeah, at least where I, you know, we didn't have a cafeteria like in grammar school. No, in grammar school, you had to bring your own lunch. So where would you eat? You bring your own lunch. You brown bag it. There yeah, was but no, you like, go outside and eat. You don't sit in a, everybody has a cafeteria. It was the gym. So we used our gym and they'd put just like fold out tables in there. Oh, really? Yeah. But then I remember like when, you know, like my mom was Italian. We always talk about this. But when you get the super Italian like kids and stuff, they have the best lunches ever. <laughs> and you always wanted to trade with them, but nobody wanted your stupid lunch. They would have like the big Italian bread. Like I remember Mimo, even in high school, would bring like Nutella. His mom would make Nutella sandwiches on the good Italian bread. He'd always have good food, you know, like because you never want so what funny. kids never want what they have even like our kids right. with our neighbors, they go and eat their snacks and we have a million snacks, but they want other people's snacks. It's the same when I was a kid, like the sandwiches were the best. Like I remember this guy, Vince Scaletta, shout out, buddy. We grew up on the same street, but he'd bring like his mom would always make him like uh, mozzarella and mortadella sandwiches on like good bread. For lunch and you're lunch. in grade school? Even in high school too, they would like, you know, some th- we had a cafeteria in high school, but the lunches that like the European kids brought were the best. <laughs> they were so good. I don't think I knew one European in my like school. I don't even know if we had any. Really? My school was huge though. We had, I thought it was so weird with 
when Lawson and Layton started school, I was thinking there were going to be all these school buses and they only have one school bus for their school. That's it. We had like 20 school buses. See, these- my seat, my freshman class was the biggest freshman class in high school. We had 900 students in my freshman class. See, that's big. Our, that's whole, huge. our whole school was maybe 900, maybe less than that. The whole school. So it was just like a little pocket surrounded by Chicago. Yeah. And every, you had to be within like zones to go to school there. Otherwise you move on to the next school district. So it's pretty centralized for all the kids that go there. So I don't even remember a school bus. I'm sure there was, but if it was like snowing or you couldn't, you didn't have a car, you walked to school. I feel like your school, how you grew up is like our kids. Most people walk to school. Yeah. There's only one school bus. It's not like where I grew up. I mean, it was just Mecklenburg County was the biggest County. There were so many kids. Yeah. When you're busing in kids from miles away, then you need, you that's need me. Yeah. My, um, I remember my middle school was 45 minutes away from my house and my bus rides were an hour and a half. What? To go to school. And there was a middle school that was five, 10 minutes down the road from us. But we, because it wasn't in the town of Matthews, I grew up in Matthews, Mitt Hill in North Carolina, um, because it wasn't in that town, my neighborhood, we got bussed all the way to uh, a different school, but I love that school. But what happened, this is like what happens, what stinks is I met all my friends and I love those people. And then they all end up going to a different high school by their house. And then my high school, I have to go to the one by my neighborhood, which was five minutes away. So then I had to re-meet all new people and everybody I went to high school with all went kindergarten all the way through. And so it was very clicky and everybody knew each other. So then when I started high school, it was like all those kids lived by me, but I didn't know them because I went with the city kids that were like 45 minutes away. Oh man, that had to be tough. Like what if you missed the bus? Like you're not going to school that day. If you miss a bus, my mom at the time, you know, worked at the bank. She would just have to call the bank and say, I'm going to be late because my dad was never home. He was always working and out of town or but that's a long... the kids would, if people miss the bus and my mom was home, everybody knew my mom. She'd make cinnamon rolls for everybody in the morning. And um, really? yeah, she'd make cinnamon rolls and people would come to my house and uh, we would all walk together. And uh, I think there were two buses that were in our neighborhood that picked up the kids. When is the last time you had a Cinnabon? Cinnabon? What is it called? Cinnabon. Oh, Cinnabon? You said bon. It's not Cinnabon? Cinnabon. <laughs> Cinnabon. Cinnabon. I it was, oh, it's Cinnabon. You're right. I bon. think it is. Cinnabon. I don't know. I just got excited. But so my I, mom used to make those. I accentuated the ending. But my brother, we were all over the... I guess my parents didn't care because my brother went to private school. You want school. to talk about school buses some more? <laughs> I was trying to get off the subject. We oh. got it. You took a school bus, 45 minutes. No, how I was talking about Peyton. Oh, I don't go know. Ahead. Tell us how he got to school. <laughs> well, I didn't finish. People would just have my mom take them to school if they missed the bus. And then my mom would be late to work. But I feel like back then it was different. People weren't as mad. Yeah. Yeah. Riveting. <laughs> oh, wait. I did one time. My neighbor, they were like, you missed the bus. I go, I missed the bus. And I was, I would walk by myself because my sister was in high school and my mom would take Peyton to school. And so they're like, just get in the car with us. And it was like this big family. And I was like, okay, I get to school. And I remember the guy that worked the front desk at the school. He goes, honey, you need to call your mother. She's crying. (laughs) She's crying. Um, Everybody thinks you got kidnapped. And I was like, what? And they couldn't find me because the kids were like, where's Jordan? So they had the bus driver drive to my house. And my mom's like, Jordan left already. And nobody could find me. And there were no cell phones at that time. And so my parents thought I got kidnapped. Oh, that's scary. So then I called my mom and she's like, don't do that to me. And I was like, I thought I was just rode with the, I rode with the Richardson's mom. And she was like crying. And so anyways, everybody thought I got kidnapped and everybody was trying to find me. Oh boy. All right. Well, yeah, let's end on that mom. note. I'm glad you're back. 
and nothing <laughs> happened. We're going to end our school bus story. So when we'll come back. We'll have a new topic. All right. Okay. Stick around. Our kids were on fall break and my schedule's been all messed up and I missed a couple days of drinking my AG1 and I could totally tell. Really? I'm dead serious because I've been taking it 10 months now, every day straight. And I could feel the difference of not taking it because we went up to the mountains. Yeah. I bring my little travel packs anytime I go on vacation. So I brought them up to the mountains. I hand them out. I tell everybody drink AG1 and all of our friends are getting on board because AG1 contains prebiotics, probiotics, and gut supporting ingredients to support your digestion, reduce bloating, and keep you regular, especially when you're on vacation. I also take AG1 for my gut health now. We're about to go into flu season and I feel like I, I don't have as strong immunity and I drink my AG1 to keep my immunity up and the vitamin C and zinc in there. They don't make me sick. The zinc, normally if I take zinc by itself, I always feel super sick and nauseous and it doesn't do that. Well, in a research study, 97% of participants felt digestion improvement after 90 days of drinking AG1 and you're well past that. Oh yeah. I drank my AG1 this morning. I had a, I had a good one. <laughs> I dropped you, a load off. I keeps, dropped the kids off and I dropped a load off. There you go. Keep you regular. <laughs> AG1 has all non-GMO ingredients and contains no added sugar. AG1 helps fill nutrient gaps and supports your gut for healthy digestion. So start with AG1 and notice the difference for yourself. It's a great first step to investing in your health. And that's why AG1 has been a proud partner of ours for so long. Try AG1 and get a free bottle of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packets. Exactly what I was talking about with your first person purchase at drinkag1.com slash together mess. That's M-E-S-S. That's a $48 value for free. If you go to drinkag1.com slash together mess, you got to check it out for yourself. But wait, before this was one other thing I wanted to add. We, if you follow my Instagram, we have this cute little bunny. It was a baby bunny and now it's a big bunny. I was looking at him yesterday, just like staring at him in the yard. Okay. So up in the morning, our camera that's down here at the bottom patio. He likes hanging out down here now. And it goes off at like four in the morning and he's playing and I love it. So last night it woke me up cause I always have my phone on yeah. and I always get the alerts and um, the baby bunny, what, well, he's not baby anymore, but he was like hopping around over here playing and I was just watching him. And then the light cuts on and he gets scared, the floodlight. And then he gets scared and he hides up under the fire pit. Oh, he does? He hides up under the fire pit and he gets scared when the light comes on and then he'll wait and he creeps out and he'll run to the side. It's like my favorite thing is to watch he, this rabbit. Well, the big tree back there, he hides Hides too. from because the- Because he comes up, like, I, I don't know if we, we're trying to describe our basement here. So we have like this little patio window and we have a small patio right outside the window that's covered from our upstairs uh, balcony. And so when we say fire pit, it's like a little gas fire pit. Don't get scared. He won't get stuck in there. But he comes up to the window sometimes and I'm just like watching TV. And I'm like, oh my God, I think he like trusts me now. And as soon as I move, he's like, Tew. I know. <laughs> and I see him out in the front and uh, he'll look and I try to walk towards him and he runs. I know. I, I know, but I just love what I'm just like, buddy, stay alive. Don't let these coyotes, hawks, snakes, whatever get you. Yeah, because I've heard some weird sounds at night. I know. Things getting wiped out. And this little bunny, I don't know why we keep talking about him, but he was super tiny so and he tiny. dug this little hole like by our porch. And our neighbor's like, dude, you got to get rid of that thing. It's going to cause an infestation. And I was like, no way. Look how cute that thing is. That's it's just good. sitting there. I'm like, I can't do that. So we kind of were pulling, we were feeding we're pulling it. for our we're pulling. We Everybody's like, it'll mess up your grass. You don't want the rabbit, but I'm pulling for him. Yeah. And now he's like doubled in size and I see him all the time. I feel like we're friends and he has no idea what's going on because he's a rabbit. Yes. Yeah. But I just, I just had to say that because I just, I love that. Right. But there have been, uh, I've been seeing in the neighborhood, coyotes. Everybody's, they must be hungry. There's well, a bunch. You see coyotes uh, a lot. When the ring goes off in the middle of the night, 
with the back camera, I kind of get excited because there's like deer, like bighorn deer around here, foxes, uh, there's we had mountain a good, lions. We had a very healthy, uh, it wasn't a mountain lion, a, um, Bobcat? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And remember, Maybe we, I'm not, I didn't mean mountain lion. I meant bobcat, yeah. There are mountain lions I, not one, far. Yeah, but one didn't cross our camera. I was thinking of a bobcat. Yeah, it was a bobcat, but it did the way it walked. I was like, Super oh cool. my God, was that a mountain lion? It was lion? big, too. It was big. And, and it uh, had the pointy, like the hair on the ears. Yes. But we catch them on our ring cameras. So it's really, I, I don't know. I like it. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so. Uh, we'll go back talking about, so Jeff this weekend was busy putting, um, a boy band together and now you all can see, um, a face with the name. Cause we always talk about our neighbors. We are going to have them on. I did a post about it. I know people have a lot of you keep asking, when are you guys going to have like reality people on? But I just feel like it needs to be genuine and it needs to be fitting and organic. I don't want to just have someone on because I know people do that because that's how you grow your podcast. You do the cross and promoting. We'll get there. Yeah, we yeah. will. But right now it's like with our neighbors, it's just so fitting. So Mark is the one in the video. If you saw it, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to my Instagram. Jeff and them were lip singing to Brian McKnight back at one. So I've been doing that just for fun, like with my friends for years. when we for decades, for a long time. So even like, uh, I mean, way back in the day I did that, but with even your California with all crew. my California crew, we definitely did that. And we take a lot of time, like go up in the trees and shoot. Like, remember we did the LFO ones. Yeah. And Louie was an editor, one yeah. of our friends. And so Louie would shoot and record everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just have so much fun with it. And I think a lot of people who don't aren't in the entertainment industry or business, once they get going and like get away from the shyness, it's just fun. We're being goofy. We're not trying to like be famous on there or anything, but it's just fun. And so my neighbors this weekend, I'm like, oh my God, let's make a music video. Cause we do it anyways. We're singing and dancing all the time on the balcony. So I'm like, let's record this. So I like choreograph the Wait, whole thing though, for Tell it. them our one neighbor, he's a Green Beret military, works in the FBI, very cold, very stone cold, not social, doesn't like being around a lot of people. And my next door neighbor came over and she goes, Jeff and the guys are making videos. And I was like, there's no way Zach is participating. No way. Cause he leaves when y'all get goofy. Yeah. And you got, you broke him. He was all in. He was all in. So that was the first guy you see that I put the green beret. And then Mark. Mark's always dancing and singing. Mark anyways. is always yeah. dancing. He's the lovable oil trader. That's what I put on there. And then I, because <laughs> I edited the video for him. And then I put the unemployed TV host <laughs> <laughs> when Jeff came out. Cause I thought that was just so funny. The man band wannabe. But yeah, I always <laughs> wanted to be in a boy band. I, that's how, so it's so weird like going all the way back i remember like when boy bands first came out i know you were young but like if you if you like them you people are like you're gay like i know oh, you can't yeah. say that phrase now or whatever it meant back then but people like you're gay i'm like really I, i'm cool with it dude i love these guys and then they're like <laughs> oh whatever dork you're a loser i'm like oh really and then i would just be like uh i'm just trying to think of like a boy band song that's uh, I got Brian McKnight in my head now. Backstreet. Yeah. So if back, I, if I, all right. so if I'm like, oh, really? You don't know the next line to Backstreet's back? Say the next line. And they're like, all right. I'm like, don't tell me you don't listen. They're the only thing they play on the radio. They're on TRL. They're everywhere. Don't pretend like you don't like them because they're better looking and more talented than you. Accept the fact and just get into the craze. So I did that way back when. And even when I met Lance for the first time on back, uh, Lance Bass from InSync. 
Cause he watched Big Brother and I was on Big Brother and I guess on Big Brother I expressed my love for boy bands. Yeah. So when I first met him, he was like, Hey, thanks for liking boy bands. That was like his first thing. And I was like so starstruck because I loved boy bands and stuff. But it was just I always liked boy bands and like I I know it's funny them looking in the camera and doing all that stuff slow, but it's just funny to me. I'm just having a good time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know what I'm gonna call them because we're the cul-de-sac. My friend was like, oh my gosh, I'll be the first follower for the cul-de-sac boys. But we've been doing, <laughs> we've been doing it for a long time. It's just, we, we never just filmed put it, it. Yeah. We right. Just Cause I had a job. There. I'm like, I probably shouldn't put this out there, but now it's like, Hey, do whatever you want. Make yeah. your own content. No, we're all just having fun. And that's typically what we do on the weekends with our neighbors. Everybody's drinking beers. And then the kids are just running around playing. Everybody's sitting out on the driveway in lawn chairs or in someone's house. Someone's grilling or cooking. For Everybody sure. alternates. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things going on. The guys got either UFC fights on or football game. And everybody's just talking, having fun, and just everyone brings a little food and you just grill it all up yeah. and put it out. We just or have dancing. A we all play music. It's kind of like whoever's house is there. Like Rich likes his old rocker stuff. Yeah. Mark and Jeff like the rap. Zach likes um Zach Bryan type country type music. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's kind of got their thing and we all just embrace it and have a good time. So that's why we started. Uh, well, I wasn't even there. I was actually about to go to bed because I had started my period and I was cramping and tired. And my neighbor's <laughs> wife came over and got me and was like, you have to see this. It's hilarious. Yeah. We got more videos too. We yeah. Did a, we got we did more. I just edited another one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we, we had a bunch. And real quick, we're going to take a break. But one of our friends, Shane Farley, who's a producer, I hope I could say his name, but he's a he's a producer. He did Steve Harvey, a ton of other stuff. And uh, he's our friend, you know, from Los Angeles. And when we sent that video and Jordan posted it, he's friends with Brian McKnight through work and yeah. something he did. So he texted the whole video to Brian McKnight and Brian McKnight wrote Comment, back. Yeah. yeah he and wrote back to us and he's like, ha that's hilarious. He's like, I can't get away from it or something like yeah. that. But yeah, so it was cool. So Brian McKnight even saw the, the video, video himself. So thanks Shane. Yeah. Thanks Shane. <laughs> and we're going to have Shane on hopefully one time too, speaking of guests. I love Shane. He's, he's got so best. many stories and uh, man, we go way back. Oh, I'm, but that's what I'm talking about, like having our friends on, like yes. people that we know. Um, and I'm not saying we're never going to have a reality person on. I just want it to be, again, just genuine and not just have someone on because you're trying to grow your audience, right. you know? All right. Well, okay. let's, uh, speaking of growing the audience, let's take a little break and then we'll come back. Maybe finish up with some. Uh, what did you call it? Ask J. Joe? Ask J. Joe? Is that what you called it? I don't know. I was just spitballing. Oh, well. Maybe we should come up with a better name. Well, we can't figure it out right now. I'm going to pull them up. Riley sent them to me. They're the Dear Abbeys. Okay, let's Dear take a Jeff break. Jeff and Jordan. Okay, let's take a break. We'll take a break. <laughs> Together Mess is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's starting to get dark early. I hate that. It's depression season. It is. It really is. It does. It has an effect on your psyche. Absolutely. Because I need the sun. I thrive on the sun. And when it gets dark early... I, what am I doing on the couch in the covers? I don't like being cold and it's dark and I just want to watch TV and I definitely get like moody and depressed, like depression, depression, <laughs> soups, depression. <laughs> it's a real thing. And when you start winding down your day at like five 30 and you think it's bedtime because it's getting dark, that messes with like, what's the word I'm looking for? Just mess it. Yeah, I was about to say that. Messes your whole balance, everything. Yeah, your balance off. is off. And that's when you need someone to talk to. Therapy is a great tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them. I think everybody needs therapy. I think it's good to, uh, even if you, even if nothing crazy is going on in your life, I think it's good just to talk to somebody. Yeah. And I think we've gotten over that stereotype where if you're in therapy, that means something's wrong with you. And I think now we live in a day and age when you just need someone to talk to you, it helps your mental health. And that's why better help is so great. Because sometimes the scariest thing is not facing our fears in the first place and holding ourselves back. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited 
to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with the licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time with no additional charge. So overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Together Mess. That's M-E-S-S today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Together Mess, M-E-S-S. All right, welcome back. So again, thank you guys for writing in to togethermesspod at gmail.com. Uh, so many questions and stories and help me, please. I know. I love that you guys are writing in. Yeah. So you know what else you could write in? Write in a proper title for this segment. Yeah. What do you want this to be called? Because I have, I'm not clever with stuff Yeah, we just like don't that. want to jack Dear Abby's. Yeah, we don't. But send us those in. Um, do you want me to start with the first one? There's so many good ones. Right, that's usually a good place to start. I know, but. Um, you didn't get that joke. Well, I'm focusing right now. There, I want to read like all the of these. One. The third one. You missed it. Totally went over your head. You're focused on reading that. Sorry. So go ahead. Read that. Okay. Okay. We got some good ones. All right. We're, just, we're doing all these. Hey, let me ask you a quick question. What? <laughs> I don't know why this made me think of it, but I just want to see if you could get it. If you're in a race, okay, you're in a race, right? Uh -huh. Just like a foot race or for the Olympics, for the Olympics, right? You pass the person in second. What place are you in? What? You're in a race. Yeah. Okay. First, second, and third get gold, silver, bronze. You pass the person in second place. What place? I run past the person that's in second place. Right. What place are you now You're in? In first place. <laughs> what? You run past a person that's in second place. Right. And you pass the person in third. You go to the second person. You're in first place. You pass a person in second. What place are you at? First. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> I saw this. It so what am funny. I not getting? What? You're not getting it. I'm not getting it. Think about it. There's three people running and you're in first, second, or third. Right. And the people are running and you pass the person that's second. Right. What place are you at? First. <laughs> you're not. What place? Think about it. Visualize it. I'm trying to. What is it? All right. If I was in first and Lawson was in second and Leighton was in third and you passed Lawson for second place, what place are you at? I passed Lawson, Lawson for second place. Right. What place are you at? Third. What? I don't know. I'm just saying that because. Visualize. I'm in first. Lawson's in second. Layton's in third. You run past Layton. Okay. You run past Lawson. Yes. What place are you in You're now? in first place. Where am I in the race? We're fi we both, you're tied? <laughs> I'm still not getting it? No. What is it? If I'm in first, I'm ahead of you. Tell me the freaking answer. Okay, I'm ahead of you. How could you be in first? So then what would I be, second? Yes, you're in second place. You just But you said I passed Lawson. You did. You now took over second place and Lawson oh. is now in third. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I hate you. I knew you'd fall for that one. I don't know how it just popped in my head, but that's funny. Anyways. <laughs> I hate you. That was great. Okay. All right. Let's get to some questions. Again, thanks for, uh, that was, thanks Instagram for showing me that. I saw that this weekend and I was laughing because I think I fell for it too. I'm like, wait, you're in second. And I was like, oh, anyways, let's go. You're mad about it now. No, I'm not. I'm not. I lost my place. So this is from Lindsay. Hey guys, love your podcast. Been a fan since big brother. I recently started seeing someone new and I really like him. There aren't a lot of red flags that I've noticed. However, he smokes weed every night before bed. <laughs> At first, I didn't think it was going to bother me, but I thought more about it and I realized that it's just not compatible with who I am. I never really smoke unless it's a social event, but even when it's not likely that I will smoke. What should I do? What are your thoughts? Am I overreacting? If that's maybe a deal breaker, when I think about a future husband and father, I just don't know if I want someone who smoke who smokes constantly as it seems 
Oh, as it seems more of an escape. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much. Wow. That was a deep question. That was good. I, I always like have more one. follow because I like to, I want to know as much detail as I can, but I understand I can't get all the details. So at first she said he smokes before bed. Yeah. And so that wouldn't be all day. That's maybe he's got like some sort of insomnia or, or not necessarily insomnia, just having trouble sleeping. So he smokes a little weed to help him go to sleep. Yeah, I'm rereading it. Which I think is okay. But my thing would be if you don't like the smell of it or, you know, maybe the taste of it, if you guys are kissing or whatever, maybe have them try out weed gummies. Yeah, I might would try an alternate for weed yeah. gummies because I don't like the smell of I don't like the smell of weed. And then when it's on you, it's, I don't know. It's like this skunk smell. See, I don't smoke weed. I do like gummies at nighttime. I do take these nighttime gummies. They're these, I forgot where I got them, but I take those at night sometimes because they put me to sleep, but they're only like two and a half to five milligrams each. So it's super light. You're not out of it. You're not like high or anything, but it does help me go to sleep if I have a lot on my mind. And these days I've been having a lot on my mind. So I get the aspect of taking something to help you sleep. It's probably a little healthier than like a Tylenol PM or taking something else every night. But if he's smoking all day, I think that's a different conversation. Yeah. If it, if he's smoking all day and isn't motivated and not working, that's an issue. That would be, then I would run. I would be like, okay, this isn't for me. But if it's at night, he needs something to calm him down. Maybe see if he would try the weed gummies instead. Yeah. Yeah. Just. If you guys are willing to work on that, because he might just be like, beat it. Lindsay. That would kind of, that grossed me out too when I was younger and guys would just like smoke. And that's all they did was smoke all the time because some, not all, there's a people I know that smoke all the time and they're Super millionaires. Yeah. They're millionaires and they function and they're go-getters and they just smoke weed and, but they function. There's a difference. If you smoke and you're lazy and not motivated and because I'm telling you, when you have kids, it's yeah, a whole yeah, yeah, nother yeah. ball game. And when you're thinking about your future, but if they're smoking and they're motivated, then that's different. Yeah. You're, you brought it. I didn't even think about like kids. Yeah. You can't be smoking all day if you have kids. Right? Yeah. Cause it doesn't, even if you're functioning, you're still on some sort of drug. Right. So it's gonna yeah. and make you, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, it's not going to work out. It doesn't work out with kids. Jeff you used to weed. smoke cigarettes and uh, you stopped as soon as Lawson was born or was it when I was pregnant you stopped? I can't remember. Right. Well, I used to smoke like when I drank. So I'd have a couple cigarettes when I drank. And then when Lawson was a little boy, I was like, what am I doing? Like, am I going to, is this going to be I can't even picture forever? you now smoking. And then Big Brother used to smoke ciggies. Uh, yeah. A lot. I know. I can't picture it either. I can't even picture it. And I when remember I see, when, when I, I would, if I kissed you and I would taste the cigarette, I hated that. So that's weird because now I could smell in a store like two aisles down if someone had a cigarette. Oh. And I'm like, I can't believe people still smoke cigarettes, even My though I'm a hypocrite. But it's like, but then when I smell weed, you know, in Denver, you smell weed everywhere. I'm like, mm, I like the smell of that. I love the smell of weed. Yeah. I don't like the way I feel with weed. Uh, my sister and brother, they smoke ciggies like crazy. I can't believe people still smoke. I no. You know what's crazy? When I was 16 and a hostess at a restaurant, oh, I no. used to be like smoking or non-smoking. That's wild. Thinking about people in a restaurant smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Where were we? I forgot where we were. And someone's like, dude, you could still smoke cigarettes down here. I'm like, what? Inside? They're like, yeah. We're were we? Oh, we had to be somewhere like super small. Yeah. Where were we? I don't know. I don't know. We so used to we go to this. We just had that conversation, me and my buddy the other day. And I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. We used to go to this one bar and it had like green carpet. And I told Jeff, I was like, I bet at one time here, you could smoke ciggies and just from my, the bull and bush. Oh yeah. I was like, I bet at one time you could smoke in here. Cause it reminds me of people ripping ciggies. That's crazy. That's crazy to think Yeah, that even every bar you went to, like your clothes, even if you smoked or not, like if you went out when you were younger, like to a club or something, just reeked like smoke. Oh, from the restaurant. Yeah. I would have to go home, change my clothes. I always, and your hair smells like cigarettes. Yeah. I just That's never crazy. liked it. I know. All my right, mom. Let's take another one. I was the only one that, in my family. Um, okay. 
Carla. Hi, Jeff and Jordan. I'm the mom of four girls and our baby is six now. Yeah. It, okay. Hang on. Hang on. I have to, I cannot see. I think I need glasses. Uh Oh, I know. Hi, Jeff and Jordan. I'm the mom of four girls and our baby is a boy six. Now I'm struggling with his constant violent type of activities, like always wanting to play ninja with swords or turning every toy into a gun. Do you, Oh, do your boys do this? And if so, is there anything I can do to either accept it or shift the focus? Hmm. That's a good one. I, my first reaction is just like, boys are going to be boys. Right. But then in today's society with all the craziness going on in schools and things, I understand how you get nervous because of that type of behavior. But I personally don't think it's uh, anything to worry about. I'm not a psychologist. I don't know. Unless it's like overly aggressive because I mean, my, me and my brothers, they used to, we used to do the craziest things. Like they would stuff me in a, roll me up in a carpet, put me in a garbage can, like sitting up and then they put me inside like a goalie net. And so I would just stand there and everyone in the neighborhood would fire pucks at me and I couldn't even move. <laughs> I mean, like things like that. We'd play wiffle ball, like with a hard ball, like from five feet away, just get it ripped off your face. And you're like, why did you catch that? Like we were, we were aggressive. That was the eighties. That, that was the day. Yeah. That was back in the day, but we were very aggressive. And sometimes our boys now. Like, I think take- they are. Uh, we were babysitting this weekend for my friends, girls, and we had our neighbors and it's like boys versus girls. And they had the Nerf guns and were shooting the girls and the girls were getting all mad because the boys were shooting. I was like, guys, you have to stop. And then Layton's got this bow and arrow and he like took a last shot at one of them and Layton's six. So Layton's yeah. kind of into that too. Like he likes playing with swords. They have they do have gun, Nerf gun fights. Yeah. Um, uh, they pretend like they're fighting with their swords. What else do they do? He just recently with his scream costume, he exactly. wanted a bloody knife. And I was, I was like, I don't know about, I was like, listen, this is just for your costume. It obviously looks like a toy. It doesn't look yeah, like a real it looks knife like a at toy. all. It's like the, it, there's like water in there. So it looks like it's liquid blood or whatever. And we were kind of debating that too. Some people might listen to this and be like, you're bad parents giving a six year old that, but I don't know. I think if you're responsible and they know what they're doing again, these aren't real guns or real knives we're talking about. And you teach them like this could really hurt somebody or don't point even, even a Nerf gun. I'm like, don't point that at his yeah. face. You know, like you got to teach them to re- be responsible in some sort of aspect. So I understand six might be a little young, for that, but like I my mom like, was like, why did you do that? Why did you buy him? I'm that sure night? some people are going to be and mad I, about it. I just said, uh, I told Leighton, I go, listen, this is just a knife for your costume. Cause he scream. And I go, this isn't anything you're not going to like, you don't say stab. You don't right. you like, I had the talk with him. So he's always, he just says my knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's better for them to understand what things are. Yeah. You know, like I even, I don't remember like a big talk for my dad, but he was a hunter and I knew where the guns were, you know, like all the shotguns and stuff. And he's like, you never touch these. Like this is, you don't touch. I just remember I wasn't interested in them at all, like yeah. a, to play with them. I just knew that that was dangerous. And I was a pretty wild kid. So I'm surprised I didn't grab one and like try to show off to my friends, but I knew that it was like, you do not mess around with those things at all, you know, but I understand today's day and age is a little bit different. I just feel like little boys are, they have so much energy and they are, it just is entertainment for them and they get bored and they just want to tackle each other, run, (laughs) run, shoot each other with Nerf guns. Our poor neighbor, their son is the youngest out of everybody. He's what, four? And so he's like how you describe how you were. So he's the one getting tackled by all the boys or oh, yeah. shot at and like gets upset. And I'm like, you guys have to stop. He's the baby. Like, stop. Listen, I had it way worse than he did. And but we we're all having fun. But hey, I don't know. You never know when parents going to be perfect. There's always no. going to be problems and you kind of have to do it your own way and not listen to the society. But there is, speaking of society, a lot of people don't want to differentiate between boys and girls now and things like that with whatever the heck's going on. 
boys and girls are definitely different. If you have boys and then you have girls, neighbors Over. and stuff, they are, they're two different personality types. And it's not just who they are. I think it has to do with the men and boys and girls. They just like different things. And that's not saying that boys can't like girls stuff. I'm just saying their personalities are very identifiable. So yes, yes. I think your boys just being a boy, I don't think it's anything to worry about. Yes. All right. Well, let's wrap it up because we went a little long here. Uh, thank you for writing in the questions. We get to, we try to get to a few every single week. So write us in next week, togethermesspod at gmail.com. We're going to try to get to your questions. I hope you like our answers and I hope you like this episode. Yes. Bye. Yay, Media Group.